thanks very much. Meanwhile, some people have resorted to looting, either out of desperation or opportunity. And the law enforcement community here in Western New York tells me the vast majority are people just using the storm as an excuse to steal. Most of these have been focused in the city of Buffalo. Erie County DA John Flynn tells me no one has been arrested on the charge of looting yet. That's because the charge requires police to observe people stealing and most times people are gone before officers arrive because they're responding to bigger emergencies. The video you're seeing right here is from Frank's Red Hots. This was video that was sent in to us from the owner. Now, law enforcement, because of scenes like these, all across social media. We're seeing it. You're seeing it. They are frustrated, but that will be changing soon. According to Flynn, as Buffalo. Hey, gentlemen. Right here. Oh, here we go. Where? <laughs> the journalist. Can you record it? I think so. You right there. You don't see him? Oh. How you guys doing? Doing good. Give me that joint. I'll get in there too. Feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Looters right here, family dollar. You saw on the uh, some other footage last night that people captured. You see they entered right there. Right now, where we've seen a couple cases of this looting, which is really unfortunate post the blizzard, but the storm settling down, cleanup happening now. These uh, cases have been popping up, and Buffalo police see they're trying to t pay attention to them, but. Still have to work on all snow clearing and other responsibilities. Now, our Dave McKinley, we're going to take some video here. He was flagged down earlier today by someone at Genesee and Zenner, where people were actually seen walking away from a family dollar there with garbage bags full of items after that store had been break broken into. The door was wide open. Just one example of this impact of looting. Uh, walking along Main Street as well today, I saw there was an auto repair shop that had the front window busted in and a Dollar General not far from West Ferry Street. They also had the front door broken in and food and other items were thrown around. Uh, Camellia's, it was another store that was broken into and had their cash register busted open. The Co-owner Patrick said that there were, wasn't any money in it, but he's disappointed to see that in a lot of cases as well. As we heard from Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown today, people aren't stealing essential items like food and water in the case of the blizzard, but non-essential items, things that they just appear to want. Earlier in San Francisco, more than $1 million in merchandise was stolen after thieves broke into several stores. Not in 4K. But critics say there's a lack of accountability with the system letting criminals back onto the street. That's causing this problem. One of the people arrested for Friday's break-ins was also arrested in March on a gun charge. We have to ensure there's consequences for this and that we won't tolerate this type of behavior. Walgreens is already closing several San Francisco stores after videos of brazen shoplifters went viral, including video appearing to show a man riding his bike out of a store with a bag full of stolen items. The Chicago area has also been hit hard. Just last week, 14 suspects ran into this Louis Vuitton store, grabbing $120,000 in purses and other items before fleeing in getaway cars. Once they entered the store, uh, they pulled out their, the garbage bags from, the, from their uh, coats and, and started.
Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. Let me put the hay where the sheep and the goats can reach it. A few years ago in the nation of Argentina, as that country was in sheer chaos and people were potentially starving to death, there was a truck carrying cows from a farm to the slaughterhouse. And it was stopped by a mob outside of Buenos Aires. Now, these people were so desperate for food, they slaughtered a cow right there on the side of the street. They hijacked this bus full of cows and they cooked the, these, this beef right there on the side of the road. What we see in the video was not people stealing and looting because they were hungry and thirsty. It was greed and lust. When things get bad, most people, but not all people, will do anything for food and water. I do mean anything. Moreover, for some people, whether it be past, present, or future, they will use any crisis to steal, murder, and rape. Remember what I'm telling you. This is not fear porn, for I am not fearful, and I do not engage in filth as porn. I am speaking the truth to you. Nothing but the truth here. A few weeks ago, many of us endured one of the worst and coldest storms in recent history. Obviously not natural. And was designed to cause chaos, and it did, from upstate New York to New England, all the way down to Georgia. Cold weather like we've never seen. Here in, in Virginia, we lost power. We prayed. It came back on five hours later. Praise God for it. There were many people in our region that lost power for four and five days. We had 50 mile per hour winds and minus 20 degree weather. We endured. However, as you witness, in some regions, there was animals out looting and stealing as others fought for their lives to stay warm. Listen, it's not a question of are they good or bad, for there are people from all walks of life that are born evil, says God in his word, his perfect word. And we've talked about that. We've made a one of the better videos we ever did was a video called Born Bad, Born Evil. Some people that walk among us are born evil. They don't change, man. The question that we should be asking ourselves is this. Why are they so bold in doing it now when in the past they would not have nearly been as bold and brazen as they are now? When we looked at the two guys just a while ago in Buffalo, they had broke into a dollar store this guy comes out and confronts them. They start smiling and flashing gang signs. There was no fear, man. Now, I know no law could come get them. I, I get it. But they were not fearful. This goes on all over the United States in every walk of life. People aren't fearful of being evil and doing evil. Why not? You see, it doesn't matter where you fall on the racial scales. It doesn't matter about your beliefs about black, white, red, blue, left, right, means nothing, man. The question is there for those who want to go deeper in, in, in spirit. Why are these people, why are people so comfortable in stealing and doing evil? I turn your attention to the screen and ask why these men right here felt so comfortable in broad daylight to bust out the windows and steal this person's belongings right from his car. This is broad daylight now, mind you. Do you have an answer? How about you try this on for size? Because there are no consequences for this evil behavior. Nothing more than a slap on the wrist and home to do it again. But it goes deeper. Evil behavior can only go as far as it goes unchecked. When evil people know they will go to prison and or be killed, this will greatly detour some of their evil behavior. We don't have that. We have individuals who are taking care of their own yard. As a nation, we've lost that. It's gone. What our ancestors knew to do, we've lost because the masses have joined evil. We'll get to it. Just be patient. There are still right now these are the good times. There are still good times. These are the times to prepare for when the chaos comes walking down your road and may try to knock on your door. These are still the good times. I'm telling you right now, these are still the good times. In the winter of 2023, with all we've gone through, with all the lies, deceit, and BS, it's still a good time. 
Because it ain't got bad yet, but bad's coming. Right now, people are losing jobs left and right. One in seven cannot pay their electric bills. People are in debt. I mean debt, man. People are living off of credit cards. It's just a matter of time before the banks put a freeze on it. Folks cannot afford rent and car notes. It will take one incident before we lose the power. The grid is shut down. And I talked about this in our video called The American Nightmare Has Begun, if you would like to watch a 50-minute version of what's going to happen. When the grid is shut down, you are going to see bands of wild animals roaming the streets like never before. The new normal in the United States of America and all Western culture is whatever pleases the man or woman that needs pleasing. Whatever pleases him or her or it is what matters. There is no right or wrong to these people. They don't have a moral compass. They don't have a spirit. The new normal is to write your own narrative and say it enough Repeat it enough until you start to believe your own lies. Through social media, the internet, schools, and all TV, evil is now accepted as normal. In fact, evil is something else. We've gone so far as to hold the criminals in high regard. Today, killers, rapists, and thieves are glorified as heroes. Hollywood has made heroes out of godless murderers and condemned those who have real courage and stand up for the Father and Jesus. Gangsters, that's what they call them. Men who would kill innocent people and prey on the working class are now looked at as heroes, tough guys. If you took the gun away from them, walked them out in the woods and said, how tough are you? One of us, we ain't coming back. You'd watch them piss themselves. Hollywood calls them heroes. The society calls them Heroes, tough guys. At any given time, the lies that are on the internet, on any thread or genre, are uncountable. They are endless, man. You type in any search for any subject and the first thing you will see is all the videos with the most views and these people work and serve the devil himself. They are in place to keep the misinformation and the disinformation going. It has to keep moving. It has to go forward. Almost all historical videos are based on lies and speculation from people who see all white history as evil. Biblical history is skewed as much as any. This is why we have people, hey, the Bible's wrong, so we're going to rewrite it for you. Because the Bible is not, not only a book from God to us, it's a history book. Many in society pity the smashing grabbers. They cry about the misfortunes these people have endured in life. This is the programming of the devil's children decade after decade after decade to make evil good and good evil. Light is dark and dark is light. It is a great deception with deadly consequences and it is a part of the end times that we are living in. God warned us this is going to happen. Jesus Christ told us this is going to happen. We pity evil. I look at this sick world and I do not see any pity for the Son of God who was murdered for our sins. I see, I see almost none except by a scant few. I see hardly any pity for the murdered unborn, for the elderly, for the animals. The only pity and love comes from the same people who love the Father and Jesus Christ. These are the people that can feel. They feel. The new normal is to go along, to get along, even if it means denying God and letting your loved ones be victims of evil. And let me say that again for you because I want you to understand. The new America, the new normal, is to go along even if you tell God to F off. Because that's what they do. That's what they do. And it makes me despise them. And then, the new normal is to let your children, your wife, your spouse, your mom, be a victim of evil and say, it's all right. 
It started with men and women. Men and women allowed evil to go unchecked. But it goes deeper. Let me show you something. Turn your attention to the screen, please. I want to show you something. Psychological warfare. I've made quite a few videos about this. Number one, you destabilize a nation. Okay? Number two, you radicalize a nation. Number three, crisis. Crisis. Come on now. Crisis. Number four, you demoralize. And then you normalize. Evil is now normal. The food prices that we see, people keep talking about, it's going to come down, it's going to go up. What they want you to do is accept that a loaf of bread is $7. You see, they want you to see it as normal. You do it enough and you start to see it as, hey, it's normal. Hey, I'm glad I only got to pay $7 for a loaf of bread. That's what they want people to see. That's how evil is. You see it, you accept it, you live it, you do it, and pretty soon it becomes normal. Let's go a bit deeper. Currently, through technology, movies, music, religion, medicine, academia, and more, all of these cause great influence over the masses. This is what influences the people's minds. You understand? Most of what people believe comes from a, a device, whether it be a movie on the internet, music, uh, a religion, academia, something they're taught usually by the internet or TV. And it influences them. The internet and especially social media, especially social media in the past 15 years, has done the most damage of programming the minds of young people to accept this behavior as normal. Even older adults are passive and go along to get along. They don't want to piss off the young people. But what's coming up are grave diggers, man. The young people coming up are grave diggers. They, they, either, want to, they either want to dig your grave or they want you to, to dig their grave. And that's where it's going. And if you don't understand this, you don't understand the end times. The lies and indoctrination that we see have started for tens of millions on the social media platforms. I tell you this for a fact. Hear me well. The filth, deceit, and portrayals of evil behavior and evil people that we see in here today would have been outlawed just three generations ago. If you go back four and five generations ago, your ancestors would have rioted in the streets. Men would have gathered with torches. The influences of evil that we see now have become the daily diet of the masses. The family unit that was ordained by God have been altered beyond recognition as well as your nation's. We're not a homogenous people any longer. Things will never be the way they once were. We have to accept that because we are walking toward the final day, the final step when God says, it's time. How did we end up here? One word. Choices. Please look at the screen and absorb this with me. It began by the masses ignoring evil. And doing this, the masses were guilty of permitting evil. After a couple days, after a couple decades of this, the masses then begin to legalize and celebrate evil, you understand. Finally, the masses condemn those who stand up to evil. It is surreal to see people supporting the same beings that are killing them, their children, their family and friends, poisoning their food, air and water, and calling them, hey, they're the best. They're the most special. They are being played for fools because they have no God. They have no Jesus Christ. They don't have a spirit of God. You see, good people, what happened is, is this. Many of the people who moan about the smash and grab are just as guilty of their own evil. 
Do you understand? You see, just because you have some white men on the internet moaning and bitching and complaining about, look at those black people, blah, blah, blah. These are the same son of a bitches that will tell you Hitler and Trump are gods. Hitler and Trump are good men. The Bible's wrong. Jesus is just a myth. God, eh, the Bible's been corrupt. These are the same people that sit on their fat asses and bitch about everybody else when they're guilty of the same thing. Do you think there's really any difference between this guy smashing and grabbing and this guy sitting on his ass saying that God's a lie, Jesus Christ is a lie? You think there's any difference? No, man, they're all a part of the same culture. What you have is almost the entire nation participating in an evil orgy while pointing their fingers at everyone else. You understand? You see, everybody's wrong, everybody's bad, everybody's bad except that particular person and their beliefs. When God makes it clear, ain't a, not a damn one of us good. But those who have been called by God have been changed. You see, we no longer are a part of any of that. The evil orgy, and I hate to use that word, but that's what it is. It's not a sexual orgy. It's an orgy of lust, spiritual and fleshly lust and desire to do and be evil. It began when the so-called churchgoers became nothing more than building dwellers, not real followers of Jesus and his truth. Yet I tell you that your father sees all and is not fooled. If you're going to destroy a nation, you do it from within, and the enemy behind the destruction must pose as the savior when in reality they are the instigator. True Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, built this nation. Now, people can talk about black people did it. They can talk about Indians did it. I don't care what they say. The truth is, white Israelite people, most of them carrying a King James or a Geneva Bible, came to this country with faith in God and Jesus Christ, and they founded it. They made it stable, healthy, and it even flourished for a decent amount of time. They did this because of God and his great blessing. When you remove that blessing, what you have is what we have now right in front of you. Many people on the internet, especially around the water coolers, they clamor for a revolution. They say, we can win a war. The truth is this, folks. You cannot get enough men together to ever form a revolution of any kind. You cannot drag them away from the TV, smartphones, tablets, porn, UFOs, and Trump to form a revolution, but it makes them feel good to take that index finger and type, 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 and then sit back on their ass and not do anything. Let me tell you something, man. I'm not trying to be cool. I'm not trying to be cruel, but I'm going to tell you this. Most men are too far out of shape to do anything but talk, 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 talk. I know. Now, am I saying I'm better than, I ain't saying I'm better than anybody. I'm telling you right now, there has to come a time in your life, if you if you think you're going to be called to do something, and you're going to actually want to participate and do something for God, you may, if God gives you the ability, may have to raise up off your ass and put some work in. And if you don't feel like that you can do it, ask God for the help and he will give it to you. Am I down on men? Not all men. I just don't like a lot of men who pretend, pretend, pretend while, de while denying God at the same time talking about what they're going to do when in reality you're not going to do anything but talk and talk some more and you'll talk to your friends and you'll type some more. You might even tell your wife about this is what you're going to do when God looks at you and says you ain't going to do a damn thing because I've not called you to do a damn thing. It is God who has ordained that through him we will win. Do you think men that deny God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Word, are actually going to win anything? Do you believe God's going to give them the glory? You see, this is the new normal also. Godless people living in a delusional fantasy, a plain soldier, as God smiles and watches. So here you have men who mock, laugh, deny, and insult God 24-7 with lies about he, Jesus, and his word, then they wonder why things are getting worse for them personally. I know a couple 75-year-old women in our ministry who have more power than 100, 1,000 of these so-called internet revolutionaries. 
they have far more power because they have the ear of the Father in Jesus Christ. You see, when you have God's ear, when Jesus says, I'll share my power with you, then you can start talking about readying for battle. Friends, let me say it again. The people who think they know the score do not even understand the game or the players involved. God is not going to give his glory to any man or woman who flat out rejects and deny his gift of Jesus Christ. It will never happen. Never. If, if you believe that, you don't know how God is working in these last days. Moreover, the uprising will be the followers of Jesus against all heathen and non-believers. Jesus Christ said, you will be hated for my name's sake. Nobody else. One man or woman of God is equal to thousands of devils and lazy, godless people. This war is not going to be on battlefields with generals and captains. It will be you taking care of your yard and dying, if you must, for what you believe and hold is dear. This is your love and your belief in the one true God and his son, Jesus. Are you willing to stand up for Jesus and who he is to you, even if it means you got to die? Are you ready to, de to deny the flesh and let the spirit take over? For even if we die in battle, we still win because we never die. Your king will come and get you. You will be resurrected. And some of us will never die. If we live long enough, I do believe we, some folks, if it's God's will, you will see Jesus Christ return. And then you will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, as Paul says. Stay away from strange people and strange places. Be wise, as in live in the Holy Spirit. Let it guide you as it is from your Father. That's what the Spirit is, man. It's from your Father. It's a gift. It's a precious gift. We must go out of our way to avoid these devilish people and their evil ways. If they come to our door, then we deal with them as warriors of God. However, we exercise wisdom and discernment and avoid them at all cost. I know you get the meaning. People are losing jobs, going broke and slipping further and further into debt. America is a den of vipers, corruption, filth, and violence. It is, that's what it really is. This is an evil nation. Anxiety, worry, and fears are engulfing the minds and hearts of the people. But it's gonna get worse because you know what else is engulfing them? Evil, a anti-Jesus Christ spirit. Now, with all this going on, how will you survive? You'll survive how your ancestors have always survived. You'll survive through your Father in Jesus' name. Let's read as we close. Psalm 37.3. Trust in the Lord. Now, let's stop right there with the first four words. What is the first word? Trust in who? Your Father. And do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Your father will always take care of his own. But notice he says, and do good. Be a good son, be a good daughter. God will take care of you. Don't ask how, we don't need to know to understand how, how he does it. We simply know God does it. In closing, hear me well. Make sure you pray for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Luke eleven thirteen 13 says this. If ye, then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? It will guide and teach you. It will lead you. It will keep you away from trouble. I humbly recommend you ask for the Holy Spirit if you have not already and ask for your Father's guidance in all things. For we have no greater teacher than our Father, and he gave us his Spirit. Therefore, we must use it and ask for it. The godless people think the Bible lies about moving mountains, calling down fire from heaven, making it rain, real miracles. When God says you can have all of these things, he meant it. When you pray, and when you are heard and accepted, you are moving mountains. Fire comes down from heaven and the skies open up. 
To make all of this happen, you must stay in the spiritual neighborhood that God put you in. Jesus is boss over you and your neighborhood. Do not ever leave your neighborhood. I'm not talking about your physical neighborhood. I am referring to the spiritual neighborhood that your father has ordained his children to live in until the appointed time. We do everything in the name of Jesus and we pray for all things and our mighty father will always help his children. In the name that is above all names, Jesus, thank you for being here.